continue on with the, uh, the truth about the Masons, I'm going to give some other verses. Like when it comes to the way these people, like I read that thing about them telling us, telling you that light that they'll give you and the teachings that they'll give you and that's the way you get to heaven. The Bible says here in, in Romans 5, 9, that much more then, or I'll read the verse 8. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And verse 9 says, Much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Acts 15, 11 says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we shall be saved even as they. John 10, 9 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it mentions nothing about works or about following anything. There's no mention of anything like that in, the, in any of these verses. It doesn't talk about your work saving you or some organization that claims to be descended from King Solomon or something. I don't, I don't know where they got that from. I don't know where they got the idea that Solomon was a mason or anything. Why? Because he built something? Because he helped build a temple? So that means he's a mason? That don't, even, it don't even make really, it don't really make no sense. <laughs> Hebrews 5.9 says, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And when it says obey him there, it's not talking about obey the Masons. It's not talking about obey their laws. It's talking about obey God. And God is nowhere near the Masons. Some of the weird stuff they do has nothing to do with God. When they're sitting there telling them, they're not saying he approaches the altar in good faith and by the light which God gives him through the Bible. They're, they're talking about their, you know, they're talking about their laws, their teachings. They're talking about, hey, if you do what we tell you to do, you'll be all right. What about the Bible? Nah, the Bible don't mean nothing. It's what we say. That's what matters. That's blasphemy. And, and, and then that's, why there's, that's why all the Masons are going to hell, too. Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. You're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, not by... You're not saved by works. And these people are just straight up false prophets. And the, here's what the Bible says about false prophets like these men. 1 Timothy 6, 3-5 if any man teach otherwise and can consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to Nicodemus, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereby worth of cometh the envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, per perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, for from such withdraw thyself. God tells us. For people that are like this, we're supposed to withdraw ourselves from them, separate from them. Second Timothy four three says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's what this is. This is just another one of those false teachers, another false doctrine. That everybody wants to follow because it's it's more appealing to the flesh. The flesh likes it, the spirit don't. It don't agree with the spirit, it agrees with the flesh. Because it's not the truth and people don't want the truth. Romans 16, 17, and 18 say, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. 
For they that are, are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. These people here, right? These people right here, these masons, that fits them pretty good. They they are deceiving the hearts of the simple. They're deceiving people with their good works and their doctrine, their false doctrine, telling everybody that their good works will be, your good works are good enough, and they'll be all right. They'll 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 get you into heaven. No, they won't, and they never have. And good works have never got people into heaven. The Bible tells you to repent to get saved, and it's been saying, and it, the Bible said that all the way throughout. The, it's said, it said that that's been said throughout the Bible. That's not a new thing. The Bible says also in 2 Timothy 3 16, because a lot of this goes up, this is a little bit of far ahead, of, this is a little bit ahead, but it talks about the, it talks about right here, regardless of their claims, the Masons are clearly embedded in a mis mystical religious system of salvation through works. Any God will do in this religion, because the law, Lodge teaches that. It isn't God who saves one's soul anyhow. It is good. It's one's good works. In fact, in nations where Christianity isn't embraced, Masonic altars display the appropriate book of the law instead of the Bible. And Freemasonry is definitely a religion, and it's a very bad one at that. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells you that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And it's not talking about, and when it says all Scripture, it's not talking about every little bit of scripture that's ever been written, all books, all anything, even any, everything including the Bible. It's talking about the Bible. It's talking about God's Word. It's, it's inspired of God. Second Peter tells you, tells you right here, Second Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. All this, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, is all God's, is, is God's infallible, preserved, inspired word. And sitting here saying that they're not going to use the Bible, they're going to use some other book of the law because Christianity is embraced in a certain country or something, is another blasphemy. Using something other than the Bible. And that proves right there that they don't believe it, they don't care about God. If they're just going to sit there and say, well, we'll just use some appropriate book for this part of the world, that's, they're compromisers. Because, and then they say, well, work, the works is what saves you. You know, God don't save you, the works do. That's not in the Bible, that's nowhere in the Bible. That's a works based, another, it's another works based religion, like all religions. Except what the Bible says. The only problem is the Bible doesn't say that. But all, the other, all these other messed up religions say that, but the Bible don't say that. already told you many times already that uh, works don't save you that, and it's repentance and remission of sins that saves you. That's the only way to get saved. <laughs> 